In this video we shall go in depth into the home of Kong, we will explore Monsterverse Skull Island. It is the name most often used to describe a fictional island that first appeared in the 1933 film King Kong and its sequels and remakes and any other King Kong based media. It is the home of King Kong and several other species of creatures, mostly prehistoric and in some cases species that should have been extinct long before the rise of mammals and also m monsters that are just fictional alongside with a primitive society of humans. So let us see how the ecosystem and life forms of Skull Island 2017 detail out in landscape, climate and how life here works. Location Skull Island is the main setting of Gong Skull Island movie. The island is located in the South Pacific and sits in the eye of a massive swirling storm system that has enabled its concealment from the outside world. The island is situated atop an entrance to the Hollow Earth. While the original Skull Island of 1933 and the 2005 remake states that the place is found west of Sumatra, which means it is located in the Indian Ocean, the most of us version however is located in the Pacific Ocean and Google Maps has even displayed a location just for fun. It is located around 4000 kilometers west of South America and the same distance southwest of the United States. Landscape Regarding the island, it has a vague resemblance of a human skull. The island is approximately 82 to 60 kilometers at its greatest extent under the map with grids and approximately 60 to 70 percent of the grid area within those bounds is water, giving us an approximate land mass of around 1,500 to 2,000 square kilometers or around the same size as the small island of Mauritius. The island has vast lagoons and waterways that traverse all through it. In the center, there are mountains and steep hills followed by thick tropical forests that cover most of the place with patches of grasslands and marshlands as well. Climate As the island is situated in the middle of the ocean and with higher elevations seen throughout the central area of the place, heavy intermittent rains are bound to occur throughout the year as is normal for islands in the tropical regions. Hawaii, which is just 3000 kilometers away and slightly in the northern hemisphere, along with higher elevations would be a good example of how the climate of Skull Island would be. The temperature range would therefore be in a 30 degrees or minus plus or 1 a 2 degrees centigrade. This kind of climate with good amount of rain as well as a diverse landscape and warm temperature coupled with isolation would most definitely bring about a strange and lush ecosystem. A vegetation As stated earlier, the island is situated in the tropical regions of the Pacific Ocean with abundant rainfall and warm temperature as well as a diverse landscape. Therefore, an abundance of plant life would be expected to cover the different niches of this ecosystem. The plains are seen to have tall and short grass species and marshes with semi-aquatic plants. There are also the large bamboo forests in which the team of 1973 encountered and fought against a giant spider named the Mother Longlegs. There are also lush evergreen tropical forests throughout the place which serve as a habitat for many animal species of the island. There are also carnivorous plants which are human sized and can devour small animals. The herbivores. Now we come to the animals of Skull Island and we will discuss briefly on each of them. The, uh, the first of these herbivores seen in the movie are deers which run away from the seismic charges dropped from helicopters. Then there are the giant skirt buffaloes which are found in marshes and which are giant cousins of water buffaloes and can reach heights of up to 45 feet in height. Next are the magma turtles seen in the comics and these two are docile creatures which are as big as the skirt buffaloes. Then we also have the reports of water buffaloes and other small herbivorous creatures. Next we have the carnivores. On land and in the dense tropical jungles we have quite a number of deadly predators that stalk everything that walks, even members of their own species sometimes. These are the death jackals which are semi-reptilian mammal creatures, kind of like a mix between wolf and raptors. Then we have the elusive holy tigers which are white in color and half stacked like antlers. They are ambush predators as well. Then there are the ambush predators like the vine stranglers, the spore mantises and mother longlegs, each of them disguised as plant life and each of them that are part of a hybrid class of life form which are part plant, part animal. Now let's see more about these ambush predators. The vine stranglers are named for their vine-like appearance and their behavior of strangling their victims to death. They are arboreal insects that live and hunt on trees. The mother long legs are gigantic spider-like creatures that, that stand around 5 to 7 meters tall. They possess incredibly long legs that resemble bamboo stalks, allowing them to blend in seamlessly with the surrounding bamboo forests. Sporomatises resemble stick insects 
albeit one so big, instead it mimics a fallen log. We also find swarm locusts which are ambush predators that lie upside down in the water and extend their wood-like claws to the surface before using them to grasp on unsuspecting prey. The Flying Creatures So now we shift from the thick canopy to the skies and here we have deadly insects which are all oversized as compared to the similar species found across the entire world. An example of this is the giant wasp. It is assumed that it is very similar to a normal wasp but approximately the size of a human hand. There are also dragonflies and other flying insects bigger than normal ones. Then there are the psycho vultures which are grey, large, bat-like creatures possessing a wide wingspan and a snub-nosed skull. Leaf wings which are subspecies are smaller and more pterosaur-like creatures that are about the same size as an adult human. They are green in colour with yellowish heads, orange wings and long spear-like snouts. The Aquatic Monsters from the skies and into the waterways and lagoons of Skull Island, we of course have fishes and normal marine life forms as they are not hindered by the swirling storm system just off the coast of Skull Island. But in these waters, there are monstrous creatures as well. Well, of course, we saw the Maya squid, the cephalopod that battles Kong, which later becomes brunch for the king. Maya squids resemble a colossal cross between a squid and an octopus and are over 100 feet long. Then, there are the siren jaw which are massive crocodilian-like creatures covered in plant life with small orange eyes and large jaws filled with razor-sharp teeth. When submerged in water, the creature resembles an island. They are also hybrid creatures that are part plant, part animal. Next we have the titans. Of course, we have the two titan species of Skull Island, Titanus Kong and the skull crawlers or the cranium reptans. Of course, most of us know by now by heart what they are, but just for the new ones, if there are any, the 104 feet tall Kong is an ape-like superspecies that evolved back in prehistoric times. While the species share a common ancestry with modern day apes, it is considered to be an entirely new categorization of life on its own. Skull crawlers are large reptilian creatures with only two long forelimbs and no hind limbs, as well as long prehensile serpent-like tails. They also have long and slender yet muscular sturdy bodies and are hyper carnivorous and they would starve to death in a day if they don't get to eat or hibernate. And then we have another titan that would emerge on the island soon enough and that would be Camazots. And this one is a giant bat titan and where he sits on the food web is yet unknown. Now we shift from the titans to the hollow earth and we come to the most interesting part of the island, that is the hollow earth entry points. It is said that the ground beneath the skull island is filled with enormous cavities that lead the way into massive subterranean hollow spaces which are home to even more deadly creatures like the Nozuki or Warbats, which by the new information we got, are actually a pack species that hunt other creatures and titans in the hollow earth cavities. Their spines are poisonous and are medium in size. Anyway, the titans all over the world are converging towards the island and therefore the hollow earth would sooner or later become unstable, thereby making the island dangerous to live on, which might be why Kong was transported away in a GVK teaser. Us humans. As revealed in Skull Island The Birth of Kong, the Iwi natives, which are humans in Skull Island, were originally not natives to Skull Island. As their ancestors migrated to the island thousands of years ago, they arrived in time to witness Kong's parents towering above dead skull crawlers. Even after a lot of time, they did not advance and stuck to their old ways. Due to their primitive lifestyle, the Iwi primarily used ancient weapons such as spears and bows. They also prefer to ambush their enemies as many painted their skin to blend in with the stone architecture around the place. The Iwi natives live in harmony with the rest of Skull Island's creatures, but they fear the skull crawlers the most. So what do you think? Is Skull Island a good place to bring your wife on your honeymoon? If not, then put your thoughts on the comment section below. And if yes, what would you need? A pina colada or a sex on the beach? And so with that, we come to the end of the video about everything in Skull Island, the ecology and the ecosystem of this strange place. So like, subscribe and smash the notification bell for regular updates. Until the next one, take care fam.